Okay, so and welcome to your video tutorial on converting decimals to fractions and vice versa. So we've established that decimals and fractions are just two different ways of representing the same thing. Today we're going to learn a little bit more about how we can convert between the two of them. Okay, decimals and fractions are both commonly used to represent numbers that are not simply whole numbers. So we've looked at fractions like a half and we've looked at how 0 0.5 is just another way of writing the same thing. Okay. It's important to know how to convert a decimal number to a fraction and how to convert a fraction to a decimal. The big question for today is when and what circumstances would we need to use decimals and what circumstances would we need to use fractions? Okay, So you need to write all of that down, guys. Okay, When our fraction denominator is over 10 or 100 or 1,000, it's really, really simple to convert it to a decimal. We were doing a bit of this last lesson because we can simply change the fraction, fraction to a decimal through our knowledge of place value. So this says 37 over 100. So no, we know that 7 hundredths and then the 3 goes in our next decimal place, as we learnt last lesson. So the first thing we do is we do 0. Point, OK, I'll put a 7 in the 100th play, place value, and then I know I'll put a 3 in the 10th place value, because that's what they did equate to. Equally, if I have a fraction which number can go into 10 or 100 or 1,000 really easily with no remainder, I can convert that fraction to being over 10 or 100 or 1,000 and perform the same steps. So here I had 2 over 5. Now, that's not over 10, but I know if I double the denominator, okay, I know if I double the denominator, I get 10. So all I have to do is double the numerator to find an equivalent fraction, and then I can super easy convert it to a decimal. 4 tenths, so I go 0 in the units place value, and four in the tenths place value, and it becomes super, super easy. So whenever I have a fraction that's over 10, 100, or 1,000, it is quite straightforward. When a denominator is not a power of 10, okay, a method that will always work for converting these, decimals to, or these fractions to decimals is to divide the numerator by the denominator. So the first thing I have to do, that's 5 divided by 8. Now, I know when I write that down, I write 5 divided by 8. Now, I'm going to have a few remainder. So what I actually do is I pop a decimal point in there and I follow it by a few zeros. It doesn't matter to start with how many I write. I'm just going to write a few down. Okay, now I know it's 5 eighths. I don't have a whole number. So the first thing I ask myself is how many times does 8 go into 5? Oh, it doesn't go any, so there's no whole numbers, and then I put my decimal point under my decimal point. See, you have that there, decimal points under decimal points. I'm still dividing 8 by 5, but I've just put in a decimal point and some zeros after it. So what I then do is I carry my 5, okay? So 8 doesn't go into 5, so I then carry my 5. How many times does 8 go into 50? Eight ones are eight, eight, oh, two, six, two. Oh, okay, okay, that's not bad. Eight sixes are 48, and so then I have six eights of 48, then I have a remainder of two. So again, I ask myself, how many times does eight go into 20? Well, eight ones are eight, and eight twos are 16, so then I have a remainder of four. All I'm doing here, guys, is division, as I've done in primary school, and then eight into 40 each time, sorry, I'm doing eight, I didn't draw you the lines. Eight into 40 goes, oh, goes five times, good. Okay, so five eighths as a decimal is 0 0.625. Some of you might wanna pause this tutorial, rewind and watch that one again, because that is the trickiest one. The trickiest one is when I don't have a fraction that has a clear power of 10 and I have to divide that saying 5 divided by 8, not 8 divided by 5, but 5 divided by 8. Okay, sometimes when you divide these numbers, you'll find that there's a reoccurring pattern and you keep on getting the same number. So if I divide 1 by 3, and now I'm going to write 1 with a few decimals, a few zeros, if I divide 1 by 3, 3 goes into 1, oh, you can't do. So I carry the 1, so I put a 0 there. Decimal points under decimal points, that's a big one to pay attention to, okay? And so that I carry the 1. 3 goes into 10, 3 goes into 10, sorry. 
3 goes into 10 three times with one remainder. 3 goes into 10 times. Oh, 3 goes into 10 three times again with one remainder. 3 goes into 10 times again with one remainder. So I keep on following this pattern. If that ever happens, if I ever get a reoccurring pattern like I've just showed you here, I've done, done the working out here for it, how I write that decimal is 0 0.3 with the little dot above the top. Sometimes it'll be the same number reoccurring, sometimes it might be similar numbers. So 0 0.1818818, it has the same two numbers repeating. In that case, I'd write 0 0.18 and a dot above the 1 and the 8. Whichever pattern keeps on reoccurring, that's how I do my dots. Okay, so sometimes you might get decimals. I just wanted to tell you, if you get the same pattern, don't keep on going. Just make sure you write it as a reoccurring decimal. Okay, so now it says convert these fractions to decimals in their simplest form. So these ones aren't too hard, okay? I've got them as a decimal. Now I need to convert them back to a fraction. I've just shown you how to convert fractions to decimals. Now we're going to go the reverse way. So this is a little bit of revision from last lesson. Okay, so it says 0 0.239. Now I've got a 2 in my hundreds place value, a, th a 2 in my tenths place value, a 3 in my hundredths place value, and a 9 in my thousandths place value. So it's going to be over a thousand because I've got digits up until my thousandths place value. I've got the 9 in there, and then I've got a 3, and then a 2. So my answer becomes 239 over a 1,000, and I can't simplify that anymore. There's no common factor that goes into 239 that goes into a 1,000, so that's how I write it. Now, 10.35 is the same as saying 10 holes, and now I've got a value in the tenths place value and a value in the hundredths place value. So I'd write that as 35 over 100. 10 and 35 over 100. If you understand that, that's excellent, guys. That's really, really good, okay? But there's one step more I can actually do. 35 over 100 can be simplified a little bit more. There's a number that goes into 35 that also goes into 100, and that number's 5. So I can actually write this number even more simply. I can actually write it as 10. Now, 5 goes into 35 7 times and it goes into 120 times, I can actually write that as a mixed numeral as 10 and 7 over 20. These are both the same thing. This one here is just in a more simple form. Okay, it's just written a little bit simpler. Okay, so that should hopefully be a little bit of revision from last lesson, a bit of an extension over, because this time we're looking at mixed numerals and whole numbers. Okay, let's look at these examples here. Convert the following fractions to decimals. So now we're going the other way. We're, we went from decimals to fractions. Now we're going from fractions to decimals. Now, 17 over 100. Oh, that's super easy. Zero point... Now, that's the same as saying seven hundredths plus tenths. So I put the seven in my hundredths place value and I put my one in the tenths place value because that's 17 over 100. Okay, now... That's in its simplest form. Yep, I can't write it any more simpler than that. My next one says five and three fifths. Oh, that one's a little bit tricky. Five and three fifths. What was that thing that I learned earlier on at the start? Oh, it said it's really easy when I can have a 10 or a 100 or a 1,000 at the bottom. Let's look at five and three fifths. Oh, hold on. Look, I can see what I can do. I know I have five holes, so I'll put that there. But then I have this three fifths business. Now, another way I could write three fifths is six over 10. Oh, cool. Six tenths. So now all I need to do is put a six in the tenths place value and I get the answer. So see what I've done there? I've had three fifths, but I've converted that three fifths to be over 10. And now I can really clearly see that I, three fifths is the same as having six tenths. So I can put, simply put a six in the tenths place value. That's not too bad. Let's look at my last example. Okay, my very last example says seven over 12. Oh, that's not over 100. That one's going to get a little bit more tricky. I'm going to have to use the exact same thing that I used last time, okay? I'm going to have to use the exact same thing that I used last time, which was that trick of using division. So this is saying 7 
divided by 12. So I'm going to do my working out over here. 7, and I know I put a decimal point and a few zeros after it. And I'm going to divide it by 12. 7 divided by 12. So the first thing, how many times does 12 go into 7? Mm, can't do, so I'm going to put a zero. Decimal points under decimal points. Make sure you pay attention to that, guys. That's really important. Okay, so I can't... Woo, I've just drawn out half of that there. Let's get that back. Okay, I can't put 7, uh, 12 into 7, so I have to carry the 7. How many times does 12 go into 70? Oh, okay. 12 ones are 12, 12 twos are 24, 12 are 6. Okay, so I know it goes 5 times, okay, with a remainder of... Okay, 60, it goes into, 12 goes into 60, but oh, 72 is too many, okay? So I have a remainder of 10, okay? So then that says, how many times does 12 go into 100? Ooh, now I know 12, 12 eights are 96, okay, 12 eights are 96, so I got eight and then I've got a remainder of two. How many times does 12, oh, sorry, a remainder of two. How silly. A remainder of four, Mr. Corsi. Okay, so how many times does 12 go into 40? 12 ones are 12, 12 twos are 24, 12 threes are 36. Okay, so I know I have three times with a remainder of four. 12 into 40. Oh, it's the same thing. 12 into 43 times with a remainder of four. 12. Oh, okay. I'm going to get a reoccurring pattern here. See how in the last three I kept on getting three, three, three? And if I kept on going, I kept on getting the same remainder. So what I now do with this one is instead of writing 0 0.58333333333, I write it as a reoccurring decimal. So I write 0 0.583 and three is my repeated number pattern. So I just put a little dot above the three. And that's it guys, that's converting decimals to fractions and fractions to decimals.